right. This is an interview at our Savers Lutheran Church, Colony, New York. It is the 19th of July, 2005, approximately 2.15 p.m. Interviewers are Wayne Clark and Mike Russert. Could you give me your full name, date of birth, and place of birth, please? Cyril Marr, born February 22nd, 1922, in Scott Paisley, Scotland. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Um, what was your educational background prior to entering service? Uh, just high school. I just completed high school in Schenectady, New York. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, when did your family move to the United States? I came in July 1929. Mm -hmm. I was only seven years old when I came over to America. Mm -hmm. My no. father had been here prior to uh, the rest of the family. He came over in those days. Uh, mm -hmm. no, no, no freebies. <laughs> you had a bring your family over and pay for all expenses and that's what happened. My father worked over here. There was nothing in Scotland. The shipyards were going down. So, yeah, he came to America, worked in, uh, down New Jersey, shipyard down New Jersey and uh, finally moved up to Scotty. But then he brought us all over. We had six kids in the family. Brought us, paid for them, brought us over here, a home for us, established and everything. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. do, you, do you remember where you were? Um, and how you heard about Pearl Harbor? Yeah, on bowling, a bunch of the guys were bowling up in Woodlawn bowling alleys. We heard the news and we were all very happy and all ready to go. Every, every guy there went in very early, yeah. Oh, okay. every, every one of our friends there. <laughs> oh yeah, everybody uh, very, very anxious after. Now did you enlist or were you drafted? I went down to the Navy to enlist when I was 20. I said, well, this is it. Went down to the Navy recruiting and Pat this guy licked my mouth. He said, oh, you got a lot of films you need to be filling. He said, uh, we can't take you to school to get your film, which is ridiculous, but that's what he told me. So I said, well, films cost $2 a piece in those days, and I didn't have any $20 to spend on my piece. I said, I'll wait till the Army draft me then. So that just, I don't know why I didn't die. I wasn't going to the Navy, but uh, I wound up in the foot slogger infantry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, when were you drafted? Uh, November 42. Okay. Yeah. Um, where did you go for your basic training? <laughs> Down Camp Shelby, Mississippi, uh, Southern Outfit, 31st Infantry, Dixie Division, 31st Infantry, Dixie Division. The very old division that fought, in the Civil, fought against the Yankees in the Civil War. So how did how did you feel being uh, from transplanted from Scotland to the north to uh, down the south? The southern we weren't it? welcomed. It took about a year for them to you know, hear the National Guard Southern outfit. I'd say the Civil War, every war, and fought the Yankees. Didn't like the Yankees, if naturally. And here they bring a bunch of Yankees down as replacement to fill up for overseas duty. So. For the first year, it was not too pleasant for us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they gave a different. How many? <laughs> how many Northerners were put into the unit? Oh, we had a whole train load go down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for the whole division. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we got any KP latrine digging, get the Yankees. <laughs> that we withstood it. And after about a year, that accepted us after a while. <laughs> okay. Um, how long was your basic training? Uh, three months. All right. Uh, um, did you get any specialized training at all? No, no, nothing. No, just put in infantry, and that was it. During the war years, uh, <laughs> didn't much for choice. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, when did you end up going overseas? Uh, 40, 40, uh, 44. 44, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, did you go over on uh, a convoy or a single ship? A single ship in the Pacific. Well, we had a convoy taking us through, down, we left from Norfolk through Panama Canal. We did have a convoy till we got to Pacific, and then the convoy just left us then mm -hmm. after that, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. And just kept our fingers crossed. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Your whole division that was on the one ship? Or uh, no, there's uh, about two, about uh, three thousand GIs on the one uh, little. It's a banana boat, mm -hmm. really, a converted banana boat. Yeah, all uh, the crew was all uh, Honduras and or something like that. <laughs> what were conditions like on the boat? Uh, not too good. They say it was just a converted banana boat, and it still looked like a banana boat. <laughs> mm -hmm. It rode like a banana boat. <laughs> 
as I say, the crew, uh, no bike, this, this. We had Navy, gu we had Navy gunners on the ship. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. The, yeah, the armed had, guard. Yeah, we had armed guard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. How long did it take you to cross up? Uh, Thirty-five days to get to oh. New Guinea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's very slow and uh, <laughs> and through Panama Canal mm -hmm. with fresh water shower there through Panama Canal. Uh -huh. Everybody very happy about that to take a sh fresh water shower. <laughs> now, what did you do when you reached New Guinea? Uh, I took some training first because we didn't have any jungle training. So, uh, but shortly after, took, we had to uh, march over the Old Stanley Mountains. Uh, they gave us a few rations. We had to dig up our food to get us used to it, you know. Uh -huh. A three day, three day hike it was to go to Old Stanley. It's quite a mountain range down uh -huh. there. Very tough, very tough going. And uh, that was just our basic. Then we then to, to us farther in the jungles, and the, then we're ready to start uh, chasing the jet. But we were very, very fortunate. My my company, my uh, regiment there, was very fortunate. We hit in the north and the south. We in the south, but the northern ones really had it bad. The southern guys were were come the the jet thin, you know, between the north and the south. Mm -hmm. The 32nd Division up here and the 31st Division, we pinched the, the Japs in the center. The 32nd, they had it bad, and the 125th Regiment of our division had it bad. We were very fortunate. We would, we Jap, you know, we got the Japs. We, I was in the Mortar Division. So uh, we weren't up front. Being the Mortar, you got to sit back. And uh, you can only fire your mortars when you got clearing. Mm -hmm. Can't put any shells, any, any trees, got to just hit one branch to explode the shell, mm -hmm. kill one, and it's, you know, people you don't want to kill. You now, know, what did you do in the mortar section? I was the number two gunner, with three, with the, the lead gunner, I was at the bay, the, the, uh, the t I carried the, 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 the tube, I called it, 45-pound mm -hmm. <laughs> barrel, the barrel, really. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, what size mortar was this? 81 millimeter. Okay, it was yeah. a larger. Yeah, we yeah the Japs had the 61. Mm -hmm. We had the 81 millimeter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah so. Now, did you carry any sidearms or weapons? Yeah, pistol. Also? I carried a pistol and my mortar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the barrel, the mortar. I say I, I was walking like that after a while, carrying that 45 pound thing every place I went. Did you have to carry a lot of personal equipment with you too. Oh yeah, yeah, I carry full fuel pack. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, I had your full fuel pack. Water and pistol and everything, yeah. yeah. You, you never carried a carbine too? Just yeah, I did for a short time before we got pistol. We went into M1 rifle, we carried it first, then they got us carbine, we thought it was wonderful. Then we got 45 pistol, that, that was best, yeah. Mm -hmm. Hard to fire, hard to hit anything with a 45. <laughs> did you have, have to use the 45 in combat? No, no, never did, no, no. Never did use it, no. <laughs> what were your officers like? Very good. We had uh, uh, all all Southern officers, no Yankee naturally, mm -hmm. Southern outfit. But they, they were good. We had good officers. Uh, some weren't too swift. Others were pretty good. <laughs> some didn't use their head, or <laughs> but they were captain, lieutenant. So, <laughs> mm -hmm. how about uh, your food while you were out in the jungles? What, what was that like? Uh, we sea, our sea ration. Mm -hmm. Sea ration. Well, we got our. When we were back in camp, we got in Australia. Uh, we got our food, meat, and stuff from Australia. Horse meat and all. Yeah, we got horse meat. And I mm -hmm. told that. And you ate it. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> how about uh, when you were in the jungles with your equipment? How yeah. um, did you have to keep your feet dry all the time, or try to keep them dry? It dried, yeah. Mm -hmm. During the rainy season, all the mud was up. The, uh, halfway up our knee, you, you walk along the mud, pull the mud, pull your shoe right off. Mm -hmm. so where's my shoe? You have to go back and find your shoe. <laughs> did, it sucks it right off. Did many of the men have uh, like jungle rod or trench foot or anything? Uh, yeah, there were some the, the jungle rod. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, not too many. Uh, a lot of malaria after a while too. Mm -hmm. Of course, we took our adabrine every day. Lined up and pop an adabrine that used to taste so horrible that, uh, <laughs> that to put them in your mouth, make sure you swallow them. <laughs> of course, you know what adabrine was made out of. <laughs> your your the female uh, pregnant woman's feet, uh, your urine. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what adabrine was made of. Yeah, it worked good though. <laughs>
<laughs> now you mentioned that uh, there was something kind of amusing when you uh, a group of you wanted to go swimming when you're at New Guinea. Could you tell that story? Oh yeah, we was all, we were R and R there, all right near the coast, you know. And uh, hey, boy, got a day off. We all, you know, go bear, you know, naturally, you know. And you know, we had everybody's out there enjoying themselves. Beautiful beaches off New Guinea, boy. The sand, the beach is really nice. Nice waves and everything. And, uh, uh, we got to order, get dressed, uh, combat fatigue. Uh, the General MacArthur is coming through. Oh boy, how to <laughs> back and get and get our dressed up and uh, lined up. Every five feet had a soldier stand there. Go to the general by an hour later or so. You stand there for an hour or so, and then when you go by, you stood him. He waved to everybody and stood everybody. And that was it. <laughs> yeah. Do you have any feelings about MacArthur? How did you feel about him oh, no, as a general? Was good. Yeah, we would like. They thought he done very well over there. Done very well. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And we used to bring uh, bring our uh, uh, mattress covers with us swimming too. Film with there and ride the waves in. Oh, uh, one day we were down, we were going to go swimming with our mattress covers with us, and we, there's a jeep there, so nobody used it, so we were just board the jeep, you know, about an hour, but just bored, so let's go swimming, so we were driving around through the jungles and came uh, in a uh, native village. I know you're all supposed to talk to the chief or the oldest man there, so we want to buy some bananas, you know, they were good at climbing on the street, they would get the bananas for you, you know, so, we knew with our mattress covered with us, and uh, we walked in, there was one talk to the chief, and uh, introduced us, and said, talk to the chief, so we don't, we talk, banana, you know, we, we, you couldn't speak English, you know, we wanted to pay him gilder, we had gilder, Dutch money, and using the gilders, and wanted to give him to us, he, he looked at us, and oh, no, we didn't want it, we, we increased it, more gilder, no, what do you want, wanted our mattress covers, to use it for clothes, you know. We said, oh, no, no, I can't give you that. And we argued back and forth. He was getting mad at all of it. By the minute, we knew he was getting mad at us. So we, <laughs> finally, we just grabbed, grabbed our mattress gun. We took off, and he, he sent the guy who chased us, and then the native chased us. They chased us. We just got back to our Jeep, half on Jeep, took off. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't want money. He wanted for, for clothing. Use it out. The natives use it for clothing, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But we didn't want to give up our mattress cover for swimming. <laughs> <laughs> now, how long were you in New Guinea? Uh, about six months, yeah. No, mm -hmm. no. Did you go anywhere from there? I went up the northern part of New Guinea, and then from there we went up to Moritai Island. That's a little island uh, about 300 miles from the Philippines. It was a Jap air base, and we wanted the air base for, to bomb the Philippines. No, they, Planes didn't fly that far, you know, uh -huh. no 6,000 miles, you know. They got 600 miles, that's about all they could get out of a trip, you know. So I won this little Jap Air Base, and uh, uh, there were two little islands there. We we're very fortunate to have a heavy contingent of Japanese on this one island, but uh, our government was smart enough, we started bombing the second island over. The Japs thought that's the island we we're going to take. They didn't know which one, you know, one or the other. So they started, we kept bombing, strafing there from what, I, from what I've heard, the Navy did a good job. Uh, so they kept transferring all the troops over to the second island. We went back to the first island, that's the one we won for their base. There's only about 3,000 Japs on that base, rather than about 5,000 over on the other one. So mm -hmm. we're very fortunate there, we're only about 3,000 on Moritai Island, yeah. It took about six, nine months to secure that island, yeah. Well, I got wounded beforehand, so I didn't, wasn't there for the whole thing. <laughs> how, how did you get wounded? Uh, but after we landed there, of course, we strafed the beach, you know, cleared the beach. The Jap knew we had a big contingent with us, so they disappeared in the jungle, naturally, you know. They, they were no use fighting us, but they left some snipers up in the banana trees, tied in with the rifle and picking off as many GIs as they could get. So that's uh, the rifle come, we were in the mortar, so we were all in the background anyway, because the rifles went before the mortar, you know, so. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the rifleman picked them off and got rid of them that way. Quite a few of them had, they had tied themselves right into the banana tree, so they were arms free to, mm -hmm. to kill the Americans, you know, so. Um, 
Uh, we're in there, and uh, we in inland a couple of days there, and the uh, pits uh, had to rest up and stay overnight, and uh, told to dig the foxholes. But oh man, that's solid. You got your pickaxe that's big, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we were pushed out and we uh, to where there were two men ten. Each man carried half a tent, you know. Mm -hmm. So he also had two guys in one tent. So. Uh, my buddy and I, we we always hung got it, but, but we're not digging any foxholes and this stuff. No, we did a good slit train, you know, just about this deep, you know. <laughs> okay, put our <laughs> tent over the top of it, pouring like that all night long. Uh, I woke up and I heard a bang next morning. It was the Japs that set up just about, oh, I'd say about 10 yards behind our slit train. I could hear the Japs giving orders to their men what to do and all that. and. I, I went to move, I knew I couldn't, I got hit with shrapnel then, so I passed out after that, and, uh, man, I didn't remember anything. I, I could hear the Japs talking, I said, hey, they're pretty close to it then, I could hear them giving orders out there. <laughs> and just well, we didn't dig a uh, foxhole that night, because my buddy dug a foxhole, and the concussion that shell killed him. I found him mm. next morning intact, not a, not a mark on him, and he was, he killed him, yeah. Mm. yeah so. I was glad we dug a fox a slip trench that night. <laughs> Save their necks. <laughs> Could now, where, where yeah. were you wounded? Uh, right in Mortai Island. Like well, I mean, leg. what part yeah. in your leg? Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah, laying on my side and the shrapnel blew, uh, blew my heel off. And uh, almost about a thousand pieces of shrapnel in my leg. Left leg got it real bad. Not bad. Right leg wasn't too bad. And uh, I woke up and over there and uh, Chaplain uh, gave me a cigarette, and then I don't remember anything after that. So I woke up back in the field hospital back in New Guinea. It must have taken about four or five days, I guess, because it operated on me and everything. I didn't, didn't know a thing. Woke up nice, clean sheets, nice bed, <laughs> good food. <laughs> well, it was great. Yeah, I had a good doctor over there. He saved my leg from being amputated. He was a very nice doctor. As a matter of fact, the three of us GI there, we all had left leg wounds, all three of us, on crutches. And the, the doctor done a good job on all three of us, and the, he was a major. So when we, when we left there to come back to the state, we asked the major, give us your wife's name and address, and we hit the state. We got the states on December 24th. So said, we'll send a nice bouquet with your name, doctor. Mm -hmm. said, That'd be great. So he gave us a name, we still got the state, the three was chipped in, five, ten dollars a piece, and we sent his wife a nice bouquet and put the doctor's name on it. <laughs> yeah. But ten years later, he was a surgeon, I got a letter from some doctor in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, plastic surgeon, invite me down for any free plastic surgery, no charge, it must have been that same doctor. <laughs> I wish I saved that letter, but I didn't. I, uh, threw it right away. <laughs> Now you said you were in uh, hospitals for almost two years? Yeah, about two years, yeah. Mm -hmm. the Framingham, most of the time Framingham, Cushion Hospital in Framingham, and uh, Indianapolis out there about six months. Out in L.A., just a, a couple of, two or three months out in L.A. hospital. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, Did you have a lot of shrapnel that they had to take out periodically? No, it, shrapnel works out by itself, uh -huh. so there's no, no use taking it out. Unless it, you do get infected, I had it, some infected, and had it going for operation for the infection. But uh, normally, I still got it, so, for years it pops out by, come to just squeeze it and it pops right out. Huh. <laughs> I still do it that once in a while. <laughs> How do you think your, how was your treatment? You were very pleased with your treatment then in the hospitals? Oh yeah, very good. Yeah, mm -hmm. I was in there, I had probably 10 to 12 operations in a two years time. And uh, Ken, Ken, not one word against the government on that. The Army mm -hmm. is very good, all good doctors and very Have good. you ever had yeah. trouble with your legs since then at all? Or? Yeah, yeah, I had trouble. Uh, I might have to go to the VA hospital, I was in there about two months, one time another operation. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's, the graph had spread open, got infected, badly infected, mm -hmm. and that's in there. The VA had no opening, about two months, I'd say, yeah, before they could get it back to normal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> had a good, they're a good doctor too. She was a female doctor. She looked like an old farmer, but boy, she was a good surgeon. <laughs> <laughs> Matter of fact, she was so good to put her down the wall to read 
<laughs> hospital down there. <laughs> she didn't stay in Albany very long. <laughs> okay. Um, when were you discharged eventually? Uh, from 45, August and 46. I'm 46. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the war ended in 45. I, mm -hmm. I was just still in the hospital for a year after the war ended. August 1st, 1946, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. They closed that army hospital over there and turned into VA. So. Did you uh, ever use the GI Bill at all? Uh, yeah, took a loan out, got a nice loan for like three percent interest, I guess it was. Okay. Um, <laughs> did you ever use the fifty-two twenty club at all? Oh yeah, yeah, I used that. Yeah, yeah, but that was a good help. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, I had, had a good time for six months, and I said, "But I better get back to work." But <laughs> no, Navy Def was Scotia. They uh, said, so you, you're hired, you're on a temporary job for three months. I said, all right. I was there for 41 years. <laughs> oh, so you worked at the Navy? In Scotia. Yeah. Base in Scotia. Yeah, wound up as transportation officer over there. It's a military title, but I was a civilian, actually. Yeah, but I had a military title as a transportation officer because it was a small base. You could mm -hmm. put a civilian in that job. How long were you there? Uh, 41 years. Cut my military time and everything. Retired. <laughs> so you retired from the federal government then? Yeah, I did. Okay. Yeah, no social security. <laughs> oh. Okay. Uh, did you ever join any veterans organizations? Oh, yeah. Uh, belong to DFW, Purple Heart, Disabled American Veterans, World War II in Schenectady. Mm, I guess that's well, about it. Uh, yeah. Quite a few. Oh, like, yeah. You're active in all of yeah. them? or? Yeah, pretty much so, uh -huh. yeah. <clears throat> Purple Heart were just uh, starting, it went down real bad, and they got a new bunch of officers in there. And, uh, we're starting to make, try and make mm -hmm. a comeback in mm -hmm. there, yeah. Mm -hmm. Of course, all veterans organizations are going down. Our DAV, so veterans, is pretty good, yeah. Our membership's over 700 in uh, DAV, it? yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, that's good. Mm -hmm. Did you uh, ever stay in contact with anyone that was in service with you? <sighs> Yeah, one fella, uh, Jay Brazil, <coughs> from uh, Pickens, South Carolina. I used to stay in touch with him. He found out, he, we got a call from Red Cross one time. One of the southern fellas trying to find where he lived. And it was, it, I, the fellas was in this foxhole with that night. That we got wounded. He was the guy that was with that night, yeah. Or slit trend, I should say, that night. And, uh, mm -hmm. So we went down, we visited him and, and him and his wife. And uh, oh, we, I was kept, he died at early age, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. so. And they got a divorce, he met his wife, uh, I think, for a week. We got married, <laughs> didn't last too long. <laughs> and he died very very early age. I never did find out what he died. Nice family, met his mother and father. And, visit them and everything, yeah, so mm -hmm. that, that's a shame, yeah. <laughs> How do you think your time in the service changed or had an effect on your life? Oh, definitely, yeah. I, uh, it really did, but uh, it's hard to say just what, what it would be, you know. But, uh, I think it would, the military, you know, being in the Army and going through the war, I think it did, uh, it did, did affect the, to somewhat, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. If you uh, could hold this like this, mm -hmm. Wayne can focus on it. Do you recall where and when that was taken? Uh, yeah, and my first, uh, after my basic training, uh, we got up here, I got in February of that year, and there was the worst snowstorm just before I arrived, and it was below zero, and the, the, the weather broke the day I got here, and so it wasn't too bad. But it had terrible, terrible cold weather that winter. Mm -hmm. That February. <laughs> and that was uh, taken in Schenectady? Yeah, Stanton, uh, yeah, Rotterdam, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. My, that's my father, my mother and father's house there in the background, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right okay. by Draper School. <laughs> All right, well, thank you very much. Oh, I brought his picture in. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. The, the Freddie, they brought him into the hospital. Uh, and next, and they put him right next to my. Now, was bed. he in your unit? No, he was in Europe. And he was in a half track, and a phosphor shell landed in the half track and killed everybody in the, in the half track except him. And of course, that phosphor, anything, any open skin that 
that burned him right off. He should have died, and he, he said, I don't know why he lived. Oh, he was a wonderful guy. I'd never forget him. Now, what hospital was this that you it's met him Cushion. in? Cushing. Cushing, okay. Yeah, Cushing, Framingham. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And being my first, I remember my father, I just transferred in the hospital when uh, Freddie came in about the same, shortly after I got there, my father was up visiting me. When they brought him in, my father took one look at Freddie and he had to go out. He, he got sick. Just looking at Freddie, yeah. Uh, so he had a lot of burns then? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. This is Freddie before we went into service. Mm -hmm. he's, he's so he, he a, gave a you a photograph. Where, where was he from? Uh, from Massachusetts, mm -hmm. just north of Boston. Mm -hmm. This yeah. is this is what he looked like. He, he, his nose was burned off, his upper lip, his chin was gone, his ears are burned off, all ten fingertips were burned off. And oh, he, he, but he, he never felt mad or and he, he talked about it. And, I used to get up and uh, I'd light a cigarette and hold it for him and uh, we, sneaked him, we sneaked him out of the hospital one night. He wanted to get a beer, so three or four of us said, well, come on, you uniform there, we got him dressed. I don't know how we done it, but we sneaked him out of the hospital and into town, the little gin mill in Framingham. And, uh, we went in the back door and we sat at the booth. He sat in the outside the booth, I always remember. It was dark in there. And uh, Fred looked horrible, I will say he did look horrible. And uh, he, he's head down like that. And the waitress comes up here, bounce right along. What do you fellas want? And Fred had to look up. She saw his face, she screamed, and took off. I've never seen her after that. That's how bad it is. We felt terrible, uh, you know, it happened mm -hmm. that way. That she, poor girl, was scared to death, you know, I scared the heck out of her, you know. See, he, he sat down there, we not that. She saw that face and screamed, that's how bad he was, you know. He's really very bad, yeah. yeah. He shouldn't have lived, really. Uh, but, uh, but never complain. No, as bad as he was, yeah. No. I thought he'd like to see a picture yes, of Freddie. Yes, now, how long did he... What happened to him, eventually? I got discharged then. And he, he transferred him to another army hospital, I believe. And we used to stay in touch with his mother. He had over 50 operations before he died. And suffered, and... His mother said he used to drink quite heavily to kill the pain. Mm -hmm. but, uh, when, when did he eventually die? I, d I didn't get the dates. Mm -hmm. he, his, his parents were quite old by then, you know, mm -hmm. so uh, uh, I didn't get a date. But he used to be in touch with his mother once in a while, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, until he died, and that was it, and yeah. Oh, he's a wonderful guy. Never, mm -hmm. seen, never met him, I felt like him, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right, well, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. It's